I mean, the logo for the city of South Portland is a water symbol, and we're and we have a peninsula that juts out into Casco Bay, and, and uh, so it's we're defined by water. The more we can do, the better. And the better we'll be with uh, you know impacts to water quality, or reducing impacts to water quality. Welcome to Back Cove in the city of Portland. Very active recreational area for, for the city. This is probably the most used trail that the city has. And I would like to someday see this being one of the most used waterways with the city of Portland. Back Cove South is a $42 million project. We've got 3.5 million gallons of storage that we're going for. Over on my right, we've got Back Cove West. That's a two and a quarter million gallon storage tank. Um, going under Baxter Boulevard, is essentially from the Baxter Boulevard pump station in Chevres around towards Dartmouth Street. But right now we still discharge on an annual basis a significant amount of combined sewer overflow. Um, citywide we discharged about 195 million gallons last year. 55% of that went into Back Cove. And that's one of the highlights of why we're doing these projects down on the Cove. This is the first catch basin cleaning facility in the U.S. They are big in Europe, there's two in Canada. And why we built this is to clean catch basin spoils and street sweepings. What we do is we wash the street sweeping or catch basin material and make a reusable product. Instead of sending it to a landfill, we can use it to reapply on street sand or clean fill. We're all here for the same thing. We're here to clean the environment. You know, on the wastewater side, we clean the wastewater. On the stormwater side, luckily here, we're cleaning the catch basin material. So the, the sustainability and water quality, if we didn't clean the catch basins and didn't clean the streets, if you think about it, the street material ends up in the catch basins, in swales, ends up in rivers and streams. By taking this material out, we're keeping this material from going into the environment. So we're taking it out and reusing it and purposing it in a place where it belongs, not where it doesn't belong. It's fascinating how effective this process actually works. Seeing the material going and seeing the material come out, it comes out like a washed beach sand like your kids would play in. The Division of Water here in South Portland had come to a neighborhood meeting and talked about that they were looking for candidates to do rain gardens. I was very familiar with rain gardens, and um, so I just called them up and said, I hear you're doing this and we would be interested. And the purpose behind that is to, like when you get that initial first flush of rain, all the oils that have accumulated on the pavement and all of that kind of thing, that's when you get that first flush of all of that. And so it comes, we're on a slight downhill here, so everything uphill on this courtyard then comes down, runs into the um, entry point of the rain garden and gets filtered by plants and soil material and then eventually makes its way into the storm drain. At this point in time, I think there is recognition that anything that we can do that promotes sustainability is the way we need to go. Because if you don't take care of your catch basins and your street sweepings, it ends up in streams and rivers and in your stormwater. And right now we were sending this to a landfill. Now we're putting much less into the landfills and recycling the product. This, like I said, makes a reusable product, sends less material to the landfill which landfills are filling up, it's costly to put materials there, so now we're making something that we can reuse, as well as cleaning the environment. Sewage has been going into Bat Cove for 200 years, and to be able to try to capture and eliminate some of that, in my mind, is, is just gonna have a huge impact on the city and, and this recreational area yeah, as well. So the impact that it could be on rivers and streams is you're putting sediment that doesn't belong there and potential contaminants, oils and, and greases and things like that. That we're taking out of it. We're getting it off the streets, out of the catch basin, out of the storm water altogether. Yeah, so this project could serve as a demonstration for other properties in the in the city and 
um, right now. And, and municipal government is kind of often off, you know, operates in you know, silos in some respects. And so I'm with the Water Resource Protection Department. The Sustainability Department is now in the process of developing this 100 Resilient Yards program. And if we're able to get the funding for that, we would do a lot of, you know, kind of a lot more of this, I think. So, um, so yeah, I think it's hugely important. We could have like, garden tours and things like that. So, um, so yeah, it's really, it's a great uh, demonstration of what's possible.